Anthony Algona. Anthony is the BDC expert, the phone expert, pro probably the foremost trainer in the Northeast, if not the universe. Anyway, today we're going to talk about how to set appointments. Not just how to set appointments, but how to set appointments that actually show up and actually buy cars. You know, it, it's one thing to set appointments, but if they don't show up, you haven't done anything. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to introduce my friend, um, Anthony Alagona. There he is. Hey, big guy. How are you, sir? Oh, best day of my entire life. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to be here with you, brother. You look fabulous. So I see you're, 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 up, there, you're up there in New Jersey, right? Yes, sir. I mean, um, right now I'm in Tinton Falls, New Jersey at my office. At your office, and you've got your, your BDC on the other side of the, the wall. Uh, Anthony has an off-site BDC. If anybody needs that service, this is the man. We're going to put his contact information here in just a little bit. Now, Anthony, you're traveling how many days a year these days? Well, I just started to travel again, so I'm probably going to be traveling twice a month now. I was I was on a very heavy schedule until the COVID happened, and and then I opened up the, um, this off-site solution, so I had to slow myself down. But matter of fact, I, I'm starting to jump on a plane again in another two weeks from now, so I'll probably do it twice a month. <laughs> you know, for, for more than 30 years, I traveled 200 days a year, close to 35 years. Put up, the, five, put up 5 million miles with Delta Airlines. I don't know how many I got with American and United and all those other airlines, but you know, you yeah, know, it's a, it's amazing. Um, I know Tom stuker has got more miles than I do, but I don't know anybody else that, that even comes close. <laughs> it's amazing how much time you spent in the air, right? You know, I visited a thousand dealerships in 35 years. I believe it. Every state except it. Alaska. I did deals. I took up so I, <laughs> I did F and I, I, I penciled deals and talked to customers, you know, things that a lot of trainers won't do. And that's one mm -hmm. thing I admire about you. When you go in a dealership and I've seen it firsthand, you take the phone calls, you take the ups, you, yes. you, 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 you take the leads and you convert them right in front of the people. I so, think that's, go ahead. Right. I'm go sorry. Ahead. Uh, yeah, that, that's what makes me a little bit different. I think than most trainers is uh, the ability to kind of show people in real time what it takes to uh, actually set an appointment and create the relationship. And, uh, I genuinely love people, so it's, it's it's something I just do naturally, and uh, I'm glad to be here. People tell me all the time, well, Ziggler, you can't do that here. I said, well, get, get up out of your chair and let me show you. Exactly. <laughs> you can't do that here. Oh, people people in our community are aliens. They don't act like people are ready. <laughs> you know, you know, well, quit it. You just get out of the way. Shut up. I'll show you how to close a deal. I'll show you what to do. Okay, so setting appointments. See, the the paradigm has shifted since I got in the first first got in the business in 1976. The, the paradigm has shifted three, four, five, ten times, and I've had imagine. to I've had to shift with the paradigm. So one thing we're going to talk about today is sales. Today is is as much marketing mm -hmm. as it is closing deals. Sure is. It's getting the people into the dealership. The people have done a lot of research online. They they the the, the buying curve is, is totally different. Mm -hmm. it sure is. So Anthony, in your experience, and you've got a lot of it, what is the biggest problem that most dealers are facing? What's the biggest dilemma? What's the biggest thing that people are struggling with setting appointments? Honestly, I think it's just getting everybody on the same page to speak the same language and to hold people accountable to have a, an actual road to the appointment. You know, as sales professionals. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you just say the road to the appointment? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A takeoff on the road to the sale. Yes, sir. It's exactly what it is. If, you know, it's, it's having a plan and a process in place and on what to do when you actually get somebody to pick up the phone. Because honestly, the hardest part about this whole job is to get somebody to pick up the phone. And um, if that's going to be the hardest part, you just want to make sure that when you do get somebody to pick up the phone, that you understand that sales is a language. You want to play chess and that you want to have a plan of attack so you can be effective and deliver your message effectively. Okay, so you can deliver your message. Now we're talking about pre-learned uh, word scripts, word tracks, things they say. Yes, yes. And it's got to be conversation. It can't be sound like memorization. Exactly, and and this is, where, this is what I see a lot in the business. It's, it's about a lot of people feel like learning scripts quote unquote is, is not good and 
I tell people scripts are basically a foundation. We all play a part inside this dealership and we got to learn our part and we got to treat it like a playbook. You know, Tom Brady never forgets his plays, but he still practices to make it muscle memory. And he, he didn't look good last week. <laughs> yeah, he sure did. That's good. To a fan. But my, my point being is that professionals, they practice and they understand that, you know, when they come up to the line of scrimmage, the defense is going to shift and you're going to have to call an audible. And that's what's going to happen on the phone, too. We're going to study it. We're going to study a process where we're going to understand that when we get on the phone, that everybody's different and that we're going to have to call an audible. And the only way to call an effective audible is to have a play in process or a mindset in process that we can go to and sound confident and come off like professionals so we can get the appointments. Okay. Stolen. Now the biggest thing I have to teach sales professionals, even managers, even dealers yeah, is, is to exude confidence. confidence. Yes. Yes. You know, I, yeah, the, the the illusion of expectation. Mm -hmm. You've got to you got to make them believe that you believe that they're going to do it. Yes, you 100%. Know, the illusion of expectation. Maybe you really don't believe it, mm -hmm. but you you you. And I teach salespeople, and I'm I'm not going to pretend to be the phone expert as you are, but I teach salespeople when you're feeling down, stand up when you talk to them. Yes, yes, a hundred percent. 100% because people can sense the energy through the phone. Even, like, no matter what, when two people come together, somebody's energy, somebody's energy is taking over each other, right? It's like when you get that person that's a real negative influence in the room, they, they kind of drain the room's energy. But when you get somebody like mine or yourself or like somebody else that has a really high energy, that energy gets exerted and people start to absorb that energy. So people could feel that through the phone and they know through your tone of voice, whether you're confident or you're professional or not. I got to tell you, one thing that I do on the telephone that I have done for years, and you know, I, I'm pretty good on the phone myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're the alpha dog, bro. I'm the alpha dog. One, one thing I, I do is I chuckle. Yes. yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I get that little chuckle going in my voice when people th subconsciously think he's a happy guy. Yes. You know? You're somebody somebody wants to be around. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You know, I'll, I'll get my phone. Hi, how you doing? It's, it's really good to talk to you. What is your name? And you know, and just get in that little chuckle in your voice. Yes. That that ha that happy feeling. Yes. Okay, so the biggest thing people struggle with is lack of confidence. Now, that's the first thing I got from you just now. Confidence and a process. Process. Yes. What is the process? Uh, and if you had to do do an elevator speech, what's the process? Well, the first thing I want you to understand is I want you to, I want people to change their paradigm and understand that we got to look through the customer's lens and, and what they're looking through. And for the, for the most part, whether you have great credit and a lot of money in the bank, it's usually not a positive experience buying a car. So they're coming in with their guard up and we got to change that paradigm. So the first thing I do is I look to build rapport and, and find an area of commonality, but to make sure I have a strategy when I'm going on the phone. So First commonality. Thing I, How do you find commonality? Well, honestly, it's by asking questions, and this is why it's this is why it's so necessary to have a process, or AKA a road to the appointment, is because you want to ask them a series of questions and gather information. But as you're doing that, you want to be able to create rapport and find areas of commonality. So, for instance, I might say, "Hey, listen, um, I see this vehicle that you're looking at as a 2020 Malibu. Are you going to use this mostly for work?" And then if, when they say yes, because they have to pay for their vehicle, "Hey, what do you do for work?" If you don't mind me asking. Oh, you're a nurse. If my you wife don't is, mind me asking. I love that. Yeah. Right. And, and then I say, you're a nurse. My wife is a nurse. And then the, the, now we have something to talk about. Right. OK. Common commonality. Mm -hmm. You know what I call family, occupation, recreation, motivation. Four yep. things you can talk to people about. That's exactly right. Family, occupation, recreation, motivation. Yes. The four, the four subjects of commonality that will make people like you and trust you. Yes. Because you are just like them in yes. one of those four areas. The second thing I do is I tell them to ask the customer, you know, how soon are you looking to get into the vehicle? Because I need to know where they're at in the buying cycle. Most people don't know that there's about a 45 to 90 day buying cycle from when the time the customer submits the lead. And most customers will close within the first two weeks before dealerships start to give up and mark them dead and board elsewhere. Well, that's not me. I, my I buying cycle is usually 30 seconds. Right. <laughs> I'll get a new car. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, but, but the first thing is I want to know what their mindset is because there's only two different mindsets. And they're either doing research, but they're going to say a lot, Anthony, I'm just doing research. 
And if I'm going to hear that a lot, I need to be able to understand that and shift the conversation and still be able to try to get them into the dealership. And I'll explain why in a minute. Or they're going to say, Anthony, I'm ready to buy pretty soon. And I need to have another set of um, word tracks that I'm going to address the pretty soon customer. So for instance, if somebody says, Anthony, I'm just doing research, I'm going to circle around at the end of the conversation after gathering all their information. And I'm going to say, hey, Jim, I know you said you're just doing research. Over here at ABC Motors, we have something brand new specifically for people not ready to buy yet. It's called a complementary needs analysis program. And it's designed to get you in and out of the dealership with no okay, pressure now, to buy. Slow down. We have a complementary needs analysis yes. program. That's just one example, yes. Okay, that's one example. Complementary, meaning free, and needs analysis, you know. And okay, build value with that. Okay, so what we do over here is this program is designed for people that aren't ready to buy. We'll have the vehicle of choice pulled up. We'll have uh, somebody ready for a trade appraisal, do a complimentary trade appraisal. While you're on your test drive, we're going to get all that information. And when you get back, we're going to give you the price of the vehicle, the payment options, and you can take that home and make a decision in your own environment. And then it's at that point where the Wait salesperson- Wait a minute, that sounds like some of my stuff there, Anthony. It probably is. It probably is. <laughs> It probably is, brother. I'm not even gonna lie. You know, my 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 biggest sales pitch is no pressure to buy. What do you all think I've been studying? All the information you need to make an intelligent and informed decision with no pressure to buy. Now that's fair, isn't it? You know that you, is one of my best word tracks. Who do you think I've been studying all these years, brother? <laughs> I'll give you all the information you need to make an intelligent and informed decision with no pressure to buy. Now all we require is you select and drive a vehicle. That's fair, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. And what you want to do is you just want to change their paradigm because they've been hearing the same things over and over again. Your presence is your leverage. Just come on in. We'll make a deal. And if you want to change what a person's going to do, you have to change how they feel about it. And if you're going to change how they feel about it, you got to use words. Right? Jackie, Jackie B. Cooper, one of my mentors, uh, uh, one of my friends from other, other eras, Jackie mm -hmm. Cooper used to say, Jim, it's only about feelings. Yeah. It and really is. Quote that again. Jackie Cooper, one of the sales training greats in our industry. Jim, it's only about feelings. Absolutely. And it's really <laughs> easy to win. In the, it's really easy to win in this business because so many people do it less than perfect. It's not usually a great experience to buy a car if you ask the general public. So or even if you do a local mystery shop. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. OK, uh, continue on one with, of the other with the road to the appointment. What I also tell people to do is in the beginning of the phone call is to identify yourself, especially if you're in BDC, um, meaning if I'm talking to you, Jim, and I'm calling you from ABC Motors and I never tell you what my job is. When we hang up the phone, you're going to assume that I'm a salesperson. So if I'm in the BDC, I'm going to say, hey, Jim, as I look up that information on the uh, 2020 F-150, I just want to give you a heads up. I'm actually not a salesperson. I'm one of the client care managers over here. Client my care. OK, very good. I I have, I don't say BDC. No, me neither. Because people I don't know what business, BDC is. Business communication center. And if it's a high line dealership, I use vehicle concierge, meaning like I have oh, a BDC. Wait a minute. You, you've been watching my videos, big guy. That's okay, Video, bro. Yep. Con, I'm, a, I'm, I'm your concierge manager. I've been, I've been preaching concierge for a long time now. Concierge. You know why I say that is because I come from the hospitality business. Yes, you do. And, um, you know, when you think of concierge, you think of service. So if I'm, I'm working with a Highline dealer, I say, I'm, I'm, I've been assigned as a vehicle concierge. My job is to do the research for you and make sure that you have a fast, easy and convenient. I love experience. it. I love it. This is so original and so different than what they're hearing elsewhere. That's that's why you are so successful. It's, uh, got, you know, you got your, your training, you're traveling around the country, you're, you're going to dealerships, you're doing seminars. You're, you spoke at a couple of my internet battle plan events. I miss those. Oh my God, they were oh, the best. I miss them. Yeah, but Clearwater. Oh, yeah, teach at the beach. <laughs> yeah, I, oh my God, best times, Jim. Yeah, you got your offsite BDC working in the other room. I mean, you've got all this stuff working. Um, and because you're so original, you're, you, I, I listen to your, your content. And it's, it's like nobody else's content out there. You know, everybody's got the same old tired word tracks. Oh, best price. That's the easiest part of my job. <laughs> Quit it. <laughs> you know what I tell people? I tell people really honestly, all it takes is there's a difference between being a professional and, and, and being and being an amateur, basically. And 
a lot of this comes from your mindset. You know, I, like, you know, you said your race becomes effective when you do. All right. And you can make as much money as you can earn. But how many people do you know in, in life that go home and practice their craft on a daily basis and sales? Honestly, it's just a language. It's not like it's hard to sell a car or hard to set an appointment. It's hard to sell a lot of cars and it's hard to set a lot of appointments that show up. But if you practice your craft on a daily basis, meaning you have to use words. If you if you think sales is not a language, try selling a car or setting an appointment without talking or text messaging. You can't do it. No, you can't. No, right? I've got to tell you, 40 years ago, I, I made the decision that I would study my profession as surely as if I were studying for a master's degree yes. in any other profession. Mm -hmm. I'm a high school graduate. Yep. You know, this is what I do. You mastered your, you mastered your craft. Studied it. Yes. As surely as if you're studying for a master's degree in any other profession. And that's okay, what so I learned from you. We've got, we've got the road to the appointment. Yep. So identify yep. yourself. Identify yourself. If I'm a BDC rep, I'm calling myself a client care manager. If or I'm a concierge. sales or a concierge, if I'm a salesperson, I'm going to say something similar. I'm going to say, Hey, listen, I'm not your typical salesperson. I work alongside the internet department. And that's because we realize that people want to streamline the process and make sure it's fast, easy, and convenient. So here as you you're go, here you go. right, Mr. Customer, I'm not your ordinary salesperson. I'm one of the executive salespeople here. Exactly. I, mean, I answer directly he, to the owner. Mm -hmm. I answer directly to the owner. I mean, that is such a great line. Mm -hmm. I, I work alongside the, the internet department here. Yes. And I'm one of the executive salespersons. I answer directly to the owner. You know, I, do, I think the biggest the thing that people got to keep in their mind is if you're going to spend something and Jim, listen, you, you out of anybody can kind of probably back this up with all the large purchases that you made in your lifetime, right? If you're going to buy something for 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000, what kind of level of service would you expect if it was anything besides a car? Right. And that's, oh, what we gotta and that's what we got to remember when we're selling the car. This is very expensive. It's going to take up somebody's, uh, a lot of their credit, right? It's going to absorb a lot of their credit and they're, they're going to be making this payment for probably six, seven years. So I expect let's... and demand VIP service. Yes. I'm a, I, you know, when I buy something for 40, 50, 60, hundred thousand dollars, I'm a big shot. Mm -hmm. I expect to be treated like a big shot. I agree. And you got to remember that customer thinks they're a big shot. Mm -hmm. Even though you saw a lot of fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollar cars, <clears throat> this customer believes they're unique. You know, Jim, I got a good review. As a matter of fact, when I did one of the presentations at your Internet Battle Plan, and someone left me a Google review. Um, his name is, I believe his name was. Oh, we lost Anthony for a second there. He'll be back. <laughs> Oh, God, he, he evidently hit a wrong button. Okay, we're talking about the the road to the appointment. Anthony Alagona. Now, Anthony is absolutely special. So here he comes back in. Anthony, what'd you do? Well, okay, you, hang on. Hey, here I come. <laughs> I don't know what happened. You're giving, giving me hard failure there. I'm going to try to carry the show by myself, and I don't know your road to the appointment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know what just happened. Okay, well, let, let's get on and get some better technology. Okay, so where was I leaving off? I just got, I just, uh, what were we talking about there? Okay, we talked about the customer has to be treated like a big shot. Yeah, it has they, to be a VIP. They have to be a VIP. It's, it's a very large purchase, and, um, if you don't over deliver on the customer experience, you're most likely not going to get them again. You, I, I, was, I was saying this now I was now I remember. So I got a review from when I was working, when I did a presentation at, you know, one of your conferences. And I believe the gentleman's name was Don Asher. If you look up my Google reviews, Don Asher, he's a Honda sales, uh, sales manager. Yeah. So he, he left me a review when I spoke <laughs> at your conference and he compared me to a bed at the motel eight or a bed at like the, uh, the W hotel. They both provide this. I'm back again. Sorry. Yeah, you're back again. I don't know what's going on with you there, big guy. Okay. Gonna, yeah, we're cool. Okay. So basically, it's about providing the experience and going to a super motel eight, you might be $39 a night, or you can go to the W Hotel for $5.30 a night. Right? I, I, on was your at, I was at the, um, the Four Seasons at a JD Power event I was speaking at. And I said, you know, it's absolutely amazing here at the Four Seasons Hotel. People call me by my name. 
everything smells fresh and clean yes the service is immaculate the towels are so big and fluffy you can barely shut your suitcase yes mm -hmm. that, that, that's the way it should be did, did you miss the joke I did miss the joke. I'm sorry. The, I'm towels are, out. the towels are so big and fluffy, you can barely shut your suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like my, sounds like my grandmother. The crowd roared. That was an old Yogi awesome. Berra joke, but I, I I revived it for that speech. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> the towels are so fluffy, I can barely shut my suitcase. <laughs> but when, when was the last time somebody was wowed by their car buying experience? When I deal with you and I. That's true. Absolutely. That's true. That's true. And if you love what you do, you're going to do more than you like. And, you know, that's where the personal development comes in. That's where, I mean, there's a reason why only there's a certain amount of professionals in the industry that are really, really crushing it over the top is because they're willing to go above and beyond. I just and, bought uh, last year before, you know, I was diagnosed with cancer and I, I beat the cancer. I'm, I'm God cancer. bless you, brother. But before I was diagnosed, I, I bought a brand new, uh, Q7 Audi. Yeah. You know, I mean, and we're talking a sixty to $70,000 car. Sweet vehicle. And Jim, Jim Ellis Audi of Marietta, Georgia. Yeah. Unbelievable VIP service. Yeah. Unbelievable. And I, I dealt with another, another Audi dealership in the same market. And I'm not going to mention the name of the, because it's another national chain, but the other Audi dealership and I walked in, they knew I was Jim Ziegler and they, yeah. You know, old school. I invented old school. You know, <laughs> and I said, "Look, I, I just I, this is what I can do. I'm Jim Ziegler. I, I I know the I know the drill. But let's let's just do this another way." What what happened? The the salesman the the sales manager was all excited to see me. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Ziegler's in my showroom. Okay, so and and I'm shopping. I'm actually shopping against Jim Ellis's price. Yeah. Jim, Jim Ellis, Marietta, I'm, I'm shopping against their price at the other Audi dealership. The guy put me on the four square. Oh my God. He put Jim Ziegler on the four square. I, I invented that thing. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not exactly, but I, I know <laughs> I you said, mean that. yeah, I mean, he put me on the four square. I got up and walked out on it. Yeah. It's uh because I was expecting VIP treatment because of who I am and what I of know, course. What I, you know, it's a big investment, you know, and, so it was amazing. So I ended up taking delivery, Jim, Jim Ellis and Marietta, 40 miles away from me on the I other side it. of Atlanta. They delivered the vehicle. I believe it. You know, it's v about VIP treatment. And, and when you go above and beyond, there's people that travel far for buying a car. They're going to leave the best reviews for you, too, is because they're so impressed with how you over deliver on the experience. And that's what I tell people when you're on the phone. The phone is the second impression of the, de the dealership. Right. The first impression is the website. The second impression is the person that you're talking to. So if if you don't leave a good impression, you don't sound like a professional. The rest of the experience is probably not going to go the way that you want it. And having a plan of what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. And, you know, before we get off this live, I can kind of role play a phone call so you can kind of understand how my phone calls will go. But I'm not even looking for the appointment. Honestly, when I jump on a phone call, I'm looking to create the relationship. Because if I create the relationship, the appointment becomes a byproduct of the relationship I create. And it's like planting seeds. It's a numbers game, right? Especially with leads. It's a numbers game, how we're going to close them. Um, it's I'm not looking. If I can't set you an appointment for today, I'm looking to make you stop shopping my competition. So if I can focus okay, on- Okay, wait, wait, stop. Yep. You want them to stop shopping your competition. That's part yes. of the strategy yes. in the road to the appointment. Yes, absolutely. Well, how, how, do you, how do you do that? Well, this is where I focus on them and I focus on picking up the little things and I focus on getting to know them. Like even I think you would agree, I have a unique, I have a unique personality and I have, a, I have an ability to kind of to create relationships. I'm a, a very friendly person. And the reason I'm like that is because I, I genuinely like people. And when you like people, you become like the other person. You kind of mirror and match them. And I'm from New Jersey. So when I'm talking on the East Coast, I'm. I'm talking fast. When I'm talking in North Dakota, I'm slowing myself down, but I'm trying to find out who you are, the person, why you're in the market for a vehicle, what made you jump into the market. And I'm telling you that I'm not the guy that's going to sell you the car. I'm the guy that's going to find you the information 
and help make this a VIP experience because I know there's a 95% okay, chance. The BDC has got to let the customer know I'm not the salesman. Yes. You know, or if you are a salesman, you're yeah. not the BDC. Yeah. If, if I'm, I'm an executive, I'm an executive salesperson who answers directly to the dealer. I work in close alignment with the internet department. Yes. And with everything going on with COVID right now, we have to take advantage because everything in life is being set by an appointment. Like, you know, you can't just go get a flu shot. Now you got to go set an appointment to get a flu shot. You got to go set an appointment to go work out with a, a private workout person. So I'm saying, I'm saying, listen, because of COVID right now and all the re re regulations, we have to work by appointment only. And that's actually to help you and protect you, the consumer. We're going to make sure the vehicle's sanitized. We're going to have a sales professional waiting. We're going to have the F&I manager waiting for you. We're going to make this fast, easy, and convenient. And I'm going to ask most of the information ahead of time. So we're not taking any of your time out of your day. The better you can paint that picture, the more they buy into you. And if they're not ready to buy now, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to identify where they're at in the buying cycle and then act accordingly during my conversation. You know, one of the things I do is I get people to opt in as I talk to them. I say, hey, Jim, by the way, is this your cell phone? Great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to respond yes to my text message because when I jump off the phone call, I'm going to recap the phone call and send you all the details in a quick text. Would you mind? I'll send you a link to the vehicle too. Now you get them on a text. Yes, because whether they're ready you to- opted them in. Opt them in while I'm on the phone. Text. Text yeah. is really, text is a, a more important goal than a lot of people realize. Yes. Because right now, Anthony, how many emails do you have in your email box that you haven't dealt with? You know, that's funny that you said that, Jim, because I just told my staff that when I fly to California in two weeks, I'm going to spend my five hour flights deleting all my emails. I have like 4,000. How many texts do you have on your, on your cell phone that you haven't attended to? Zero. Zero. And that's mm -hmm. most people. Mm -hmm. Email has lost its effectiveness with the sea of spam and, and irrelevant messages. Yes, absolutely. But text, everybody answers text. And there's a lot of real complicated opt-in laws yep. with text. And there's, a couple, there's a couple texting companies out there right now that aren't worth a uh, whatever. I mean, <laughs> I, one of these, uh, somebody said, Mr. Ziegler, I got 1,600 texts from this texting company. Yeah. I said, well, how many sales did that result in? So help me goodness. Five. Yeah. It's crazy. Five. Yeah. I mean, because it was a sea of bottom feeders. Yeah, of course. I mean, bottom feeders so low that a special finance dealer couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. So when you've got a, a live customer on the, on the phone, if you can get an opt-in text like you just did. Yes. You do it because wow. on, when you're on the phone, you're building rapport and you're, and you're, and you're painting the picture as to why you want to text them. Listen, the reason Give I'm me texting that word track again. Okay. Listen, Jim, as I, you know, make pretend you're the customer. Okay, Jim, listen, uh, is this your cell phone number? It yes, is. Yes, it is. Yes. This is my cell. Great, Jim. What I want you to do is I'm going to send you a quick text message. It's going to ask you to please respond. Yes. And that's so I can keep sending you information. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a recap of our conversation and the link to the vehicle that you're interested in. This way you can have it handy on your phone. And then we can conversate through text when it's convenient for you. What a great explanation. Say it one more time. Not a problem. Hey, Jim, is this your cell phone? Yes. Hey, great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a quick text message. It's going to ask you to, to say, please respond yes. And that's so I can send you a recap of our conversation today and a link to the vehicle so you can have it handy on your phone. And this way, for further communication, if you're not available, you can shoot me a text message and I'm here to over deliver on your experience, sir. Listen, the reason I made you do it three times yeah. is because you didn't deviate once. That is a, that is a memorized script that yeah. sounded like conversation. Yes. And that's why I tell people when you learn your process, whatever your script is, as a matter of fact, when I go to a dealership now, I have two options. I'll give you a script or you can write a script. And if you write a script, I just want to approve it because I want to make sure that you're collecting the right information. And once I approve it, you have to do three things with it, whether it's mine or yours. Memorize it. Number two, internalize it like it's the Pledge of Allegiance, like you could say it without thinking. And then number three, personalize it. Because once you do those three things, I'm not expecting you to use the word script, the script word for word because I'm a realist. Things don't happen on the conversations like they do on a script. But you now have the foundation and then you can use your personality and make it conversational.
But most people don't want master a script. They're not even held accountable to master a script. They're not even held accountable to master any type of rebuttals or anything like that. It's just kind of freestyling. And if you're not practicing every day, you're practicing on real life customers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that, that's amazing. It's not memorization. It's conversation. And mm -hmm. I can't stress that enough. That has been the secret to my successes through the years is that I speak with people. I don't speak at people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This is what I've learned from you and a bunch of other people that were been my mentors in my almost 10 years in the industry now. I mean, I mean, this is what I've learned along the way. You have to math, like you said, study it like you're, you're going for your degree. And the people that do in our industry are leaders. I, I'm no different than anybody else. I never sold cars before I did this, Jim. But yet I'm able to be a trainer that goes around and trains around the country and open up an office like BDC. And, and is it working out perfectly? Hey, listen. There's no, there's no roadmap done or a manual how to open up an offsite BDC, but I'm successful and I'm making mistakes and I'm adjusting and I'm making mistakes and I'm adjusting again. And, and, you know, well, I, have, I always said, ready, fire, aim. Yes. I'm ready to go. Don't, I'm not don't, don't to spend go. all your time aiming fire. <laughs> see where the bullet landed and then adjust and aim again. And fire I'm not again. afraid to fail, Jim. That's, that's a difference <laughs> between me and most. I ready, feel fire, aim. <laughs> that's been the story of my life ready fire aim <laughs> I love it <laughs> aim after you awesome. see where the bullet landed then adjust yeah, I, you know, I got more bullets so uh, anyway we, we got some really strong people watching this broadcast um, no, no, okay, now, let's continue let's continue so yes so okay, yeah. the road to the appointment yeah so let's recap a little bit number one you want to change your paradigm look through the customer's viewpoint number two you want to have a road to the appointment you want to have a road you know a, a script per se and you want to be able to do three things with that process memorize it internalize it and personalize it well that's like the road to the sale in selling a car yes you see the road to the sale there's a there's a bunch of new new age people oh the road to the sale was dead no it's not yeah we adjusted it we put technology into the road to the sale the internet is now in the road to the sale but we still have a road to the sale you know what you know what it's really it didn't die it just it just transformed all successful organizations have sops right yes and, and it's um just you know it, you got to have people on the same page everybody's got to speak the same language whether they're calling up when i'm there or when you're there they we got to sound similar especially we're we work for the same company. And if you don't have a standard operating procedures, everybody's going to kind of do what they want to do. And you don't get the best results that way. So if everybody speaks the same language in the BDC or in the sales floor, you're better off. But it takes a lot of practice and accountability. And that's what lacks, honestly, in most dealerships is the there's too many managers and not enough leaders. We need leaders. We need people that are going to jump on the phones, take the TOs themselves, confirm the appointments, benchmarks. Benchmarks are correlated to profits, right? If you have well, I, tell, I tell sales managers in my sales manager school all the time. You've got three duties. You're a leader, you're a manager, and you're a supervisor. Yes. You're a supervisor. You know, I am in charge of the selling effort. And so many managers today don't know how to be managers. I, yep. I spend more time teaching them how to be managers than I do teaching them specific techniques. Yes, absolutely. How, how do you, how, what does it mean? See, when I became a manager, that's a position of dignity, authority, and respect. Mm -hmm. And I will be respected. You know, liking me is optional. I don't yep. care if somebody likes me, but respecting me is part of your job description. Exactly. <laughs> okay, no, let's true. continue on. Continue on. And then you got to be able to you got to be able to identify yourself in the conversation. Let them know who you are, so they know that you're not in sales or that you're an executive salesperson. But then you got to have answers to their expectations, and I call them expectations. Most people call them objections, right? Their expectations. People have an expectation of a price or or what their trade is worth or their credit situation. And when the word price comes up, a lot of salespeople and BDC people get scared and they don't know what to do. And the old, your presence is your leverage comes out. And that just is what they've been hearing forever. And that's not really too effective. Get them in. Get them in. <laughs> get so them what, in. I tell, what I tell people, <laughs> and I say, listen, first of all, you should be able to list get your price. If, if, if you're a professional, you should be able to list your price, right? I mean, that's like me going to a dealership and not giving you my price and just invoicing you when I'm done. It doesn't work. Um, it, what you want to do is you want to be able to paint the picture as to why we're priced that way. So instead of me trying to overcome a price objection, 
I'm going to say, hey, something like Jim's going to say, Anthony, what's the best price on that vehicle? I'm going to say, hey, Jim, listen, the price that you see on the Internet is very aggressively priced. But out of curiosity, have you seen it cheaper somewhere else? The first thing I'm going to do okay, is gonna, say that again. OK, I'm going to say, Jim, the price that you see on the Internet is, is one of our very aggressively priced vehicles. Out of curiosity, have you seen it cheaper somewhere else? But I'm going to ask if they've seen it cheaper somewhere else right away, because if they have, why are they calling me or why? Why are we talking? All right. They submitted a lead because they thought it was a good price. The only reason that they're asking for better price is because they have everything to gain and nothing to lose. So instead of me trying to overcome a price, I'm going to ask them first if they've seen a better price, but then explain to them saying, hey, Jim, listen, just so you know, over here at ABC Motors, we don't just randomly price our vehicles. We have highly intelligent software that takes our inventory and cross compares it to our competition within 200 miles multiple times a day. So that F-150 that you're looking at, we've compared it to over 200 other F-150s and we are either at or below our competition. That doesn't mean you have no more leverage, Jim, but now your leverage is in the hundreds of dollars and not the thousands of dollars, right? But is there a certain price that you thought of? I don't mind asking my manager if you have an offer on the table, right? Okay. Let's ask them, let's put, let's, <laughs> let's put them on the spot. Have you seen it cheaper somewhere else? They're probably gonna say no, because if they did, they'd be talking to them. Have and, you seen it cheaper somewhere else? Yes. Well, is that your best price? And, well, and certainly I'm, not, sir. It's the best price we're allowed to advertise or talk about on the telephone for legal purposes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Is that your best price? Oh, no, no. Sir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but most people get scared of the price question, and you got to exactly. be able to tell them how we price our vehicles and that we see the prices out there. We know what our competition is pricing the vehicles at. We're not going to put our second best price out there. We promise you that. Now, if you, if you, if you have a, a lower price. Now, all right, these are, are word tracks that you have taught your BDC people that you train in the dealerships. Yes. And, um, you know, it's, it's about some word tracks work, some don't. It's about trying different things and, and adding things to your repertoire. You can't use the same old word track over and over again. You want to become a master of words because words are going to, you know, determine whether the person buys into what you're saying or not. I mean, they're going to check your tonality, your confidence level. Do you sound like you know what you're talking about? Do you sound like you like your job? The one thing that's really missing in most conversations, Jim, is enthusiasm. Honestly. Of course. Yeah. People don't get excited. They don't have that you're chuckle not. in their voice. No. Yes. You got to have fun. Like, I make it a chuckle fun time. I chuckle in my voice all the time. Hey. <laughs> Anthony, yeah. how you doing, big guy? <laughs> and you bring yeah. smiles to people's faces just because of your smile. Because I'm smiling. If you're yes. smiling on the phone, if you're happy on the phone, that, that chuckle in my voice is calculated. Yes. I mean, Absolutely. that chuckle in my voice is something I do. <laughs> yeah. It really is. I am so excited. I want people to think I'm a little puppy turning circles about to pee any second. <laughs> <laughs> That's you awesome. Know? You know, I want to... That is awesome. Let's see. Oops. That is that. You, you know, I'm so glad to talk to you. How, how many times, Jim? How are you feeling, uh, Anthony? It's the best day of my entire life. <laughs> and it should be because you know and we're I still say here. It with that much enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is key, Jim. That's where most people lack, and it's, it's because contagious. It's contagious, is right. It's, and why do you why do you think we we all kind of we all we all kind of attracted to each other when we go to these when we go to your conferences and stuff like that. All these high energy people just kind of get attracted to each other, and it's, it's we've created such an a family of uh, professionals. I, I can't wait till we can all get back in front of each other again in person. Okay, continue on with the road to the appointment. Okay, so when you're on the phone, you want to be able to, be able to paint the picture that you're going to over deliver on the customer's expectations, right? So the only way you can do that is to identify their expectations. And one of the things I tell all my BDC people, okay, all my stop. identify their expectations. Yep. You can't, What's important you to can't them? overcome their expectations. You can't exceed their expectations unless you identify their yes. expectations. Okay, so, there's, continue. so there's one question that I make my clients ask, or I make my, my personnel ask on the phone that's separate from everybody else out there. And I can promise you, you won't hear this from any other dealership. Jim, at the end of the day, what's the most important thing to you when determining where you're going to buy your next car? Ooh, good question. At the end of the day, Jim, what's the most important thing to you when determining where you're going to buy your next car from? 
What's the most important thing to you when you're making a determination where to buy your next car? Yes, sir. Right. Wow, and I'm a, that is so strong. And and, mo and, and, and most people are going to be like that. They're not going to expect to hear that from a car dealership because they don't. And you want to give them that feeling like you give a crap because they, you know that they're spending money or that they're, they have anxiety because of their credit or whatever it may be. And when, when they stop and they think that and they're going to be like, well, you know, Anthony, the price, well, listen, if it's about the price, we use software to price our vehicles. And I can promise you, we do price matching. We'll get you the best price. And we got to understand that most people, it's not even about the price. It's about the payment. And they have more leverage with their payment than we do, right? Because if they determine how much they're going to borrow and how long they're going to borrow it for. So we got to be able to paint the picture saying, hey, Jim, I can get you the best price. But the good news, as far as your payment, you have more leverage over what your payment's going to be than I do because there's only a couple different factors that determine your payment. How much money you're going to borrow or how long you're going to borrow it times the interest rate, right? And I can fight for the interest rate for you with our, with our relationship with the banks, but the other two categories you control. So, you know, more money down, less the payment. You know, less money down, higher the payment. It's just simple mathematics. Exactly. I love mm -hmm. that. Because most people don't realize price is not important to anybody. No. No, even even when I got my Q7 Audi, mm -hmm. I, I could pay for that thing out of my personal checking account. Yes. I, I keep a balance bigger than that. Yep. But price isn't important. You know what it was? The lease payment. Yes. It's not about the first check you're going to cut. It's about all 60 or 72 checks you're going you know, to cut. And, 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 and I, the first time I've leased a car, I've paid cash for every car I've had. All my Corvettes were paid cash, everything. But I, I leased this one because the lease was such a, a good deal mathematically. It made sense to me. Of course. You know, you know, my, my money is earning X number of dollars. Why would I take money out of production? Exactly. For, for as low a rate as I was getting on that lease. Oh, I, li I like that how you said that, Jim. Why would I take money out of production? I got to write that down. Yeah. I, well, see, I, I often ask customers in the sale, Mr. Customer, what do you, you you're, you're obviously an affluent guy. What, what, what did your investments earn percentage wise last year? Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Ziegler, I earned, I, I, I had a real good year. I earned 9%, 9%. And our retail rate on this is, is a 0% loan, Mr. Customer. Why would you take $70,000 out of production that was earning 9% right. when you could have that same amount of money for 0% or 0.2% or whatever we're yeah. dealing with? Why would you take that money out of production? That's did funny, you, Jim. Did you have a brain cramp, sir? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, know, you know what's so funny, Jim, is that I used that same example with my office this morning about investing. I said, sometimes it's not the smartest thing to do is invest your money. Sometimes it's to keep it liquid. And I gave the example. I said, would you rather take $50,000 and, and lock it up for a year at 7% to make 3,500? Would you rather just learn how to save an extra 300 for 12 months and make 3,600? I'm a millionaire several times over. I mean, I'm not going to get into how much I got, you know, I'm, I'm not great. But anyway, <laughs> but, Jim, Jim, if I had all your money, I'd burn mine. Well, the, the point is, <laughs> the point is that, you know, God bless us, you know, but the, the point is I've been buying all my cars for cash and I leased the Audi because mm -hmm. the lease program was so, so good. And the BDC people, yeah, that, that word track I just used, why would you take that money out of production? Yeah. Cause you, you if you're dealing with a high line customer, they, they're obviously affluent people. They have investments. How much did your investments earn last year, sir? Yeah. Now, Anthony, uh, let's continue on. We only got 15 more minutes. We have, no we, are, we are just trucking right along the road to the appointment. Come on. Yes. So you're going to identify their expectations. Then you're going to meet their expectations by having the proper word track or rebuttal, um, so to speak. And then you got to exceed their expectations and you got to be able to paint that picture on the phone saying, Hey, listen, at the end of this phone call, Jim, I'm going to send you a text message with the details of the appointment, who you're going to be meeting with, the address to our dealership with the time of the appointment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the sales professional do a quick walk around video of the vehicle and introduce themselves so you can know who you're working with before you get here. And then if you do, then you got to do that. Say that again. Okay. So Jim, uh, we're going to, we're going to assume that we set the appointment, Jim. Okay. So Jim, what I'm going to do is when I jump off this phone call, being that you opted into my text message, I'm going to send you a detailed message of the appointment, the date, the time, who you're meeting with, 
the address of our dealership, a link to the vehicle. And what I'm going to do is have my sales professional run outside and do a custom walk around video of the vehicle and to introduce himself. So you know who you're working with. Right. Now, what if, what if the customer wants to take a concierge delivery at the house? Not a problem. Listen, enterprise will come, you know, pick you up to buy it, to rent a car. You should be able to go to their house. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, because today there, there's, there's several ways that people are transacting. Yes. And the, the Carvana Vroom model is, is, is not, it's not the, the mainstream. I mean, that's going to be a certain segment of your customers. Yeah. But there are people that will take delivery at the house. So they want to transact as much as possible online. So uh, you've got that built into your scripting as well, don't you? Absolutely. And, I, and I, yes, and I tell people and I tell dealerships, I say, listen, if you want the things that most dealerships don't have, you got to do the things that most dealerships are not willing to do. You have to go above and beyond, do a test drive in their neighborhood on their terms, customize the experience. Um, that's how you get yourself to the next levels by doing those little things for, for the people. Um, they remember the little things. And if you're not willing to go deliver a car to somebody's house, I promise you, your competition will. Well, I, um, dealer on the sidebar, John, John Sinclair. Mm -hmm. He said, I hope this lands on your internet training. Nice. Uh, yes. Uh, matter of fact, John, to answer your question, this, this entire segment will be up this afternoon on alpha dog on demand.com. So uh, yeah, understand that we, I'm going to have it all over the internet, but I'm also going to have this segment on alpha dog on demand.com. So being that we're running out of time, Jim, I want to recap it for you. So everybody understands. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we we're looking through a different lens. When we first get on the phone with somebody, we're, we're going to look through the customer's lens and understand that we're here to serve them. Then we're going to make sure that we have a road to the sale, basically a phone process, AKA a script that we're going to memorize, internalize and personalize. Once you get that foundation down, then what you got to do is you got to be able to build rapport and look for areas of commonality and not focus on the appointment. Because if you focus on creating a relationship, you'll turn them into a client, which is forever instead of a customer, which is once. I love it. And right? I got to, I got to interrupt you. Yes. How can people get in touch with you? Okay, you can find me on Facebook, Anthony Alagona. I also have anthonyalagona.com, or my phone number is 732-45. Do that Sorry. slowly. I'm old dog swipes. I'm New slowly. Jersey. Sorry. 732-456-0753. Okay, now hang on one second. And that's anthonyalagona.com? Yes, sir. My website's being built by our buddy, um, Jay. He's building my appointments, uh, that show. Jay Web Scarron builds your website. Yes, he does. He's going to, he's building my, he's building my appointments, that show website. So that'll be coming soon. Look at this. Look at this. There you go. I like it. Screening above the top. Is that, is that, is that, is that crawler giving the right phone number? It sure is. Alagona 732-456-0753. Yes. If anybody has any questions or like, you know, some free advice or, you know, some back to my brain um i'd be my pleasure i'll talk about okay so you will talk to people with, with no obligation whatsoever yeah. they, can, they can call you up and ask for advice or anything like that right hey Jim, let me give you a little bit of unique thing about me i don't really try to sell people anything um i think if we, i think you could agree that you've never seen me i've never placed one facebook ad i've never placed any ads for my business and i've never pitched anything salesy on facebook all my customers come through me through social media or through a referral. So I'm not worried about trying to get more clients. I know if I provide the content and if I'm genuine, the business is going to come to me. So I'll never pressure anybody into a sale. <laughs> well, listen, big guy, um, the road to the appointment. Yes. What else have we not discussed? Um, let's see. The, the, listen, the thing that you need to be is be enthusiastic. Be a professional. The thing that I, listen, the thing that I live by, there's two things I live by, Jim. If you want the things that most people don't have in life, you got to do the things most people aren't willing to do. And that's, you got to have work ethic. And you have to consciously create your habits because your habits are unconsciously creating your reality. And I do three things to put myself into an optimal mindset every day. I watch something motivational within the first 10 minutes. I watch something funny within the first 10 minutes. So I laugh, I proactively look for my first smile. And then I then I then I teach myself something, whether it's whether it's about 
BDC or sales or marketing or whatever it may be. I'm trying to fine tune myself every day. I call it win the day. You win the day and you wake up tomorrow, you try again. Fantastic. You've got the offsite BDC, you travel to dealerships training. Yes, I do you offsite. Speak at, speak at conferences, um, uh, 20 groups. You know, I am absolutely impressed with the content that you put out here today. Uh, absolutely. I hope people uh, contact you. I hope they hire you. Um, you, too, my friend. you know, what you do is not in my wheelhouse. Um, I teach phone skills, but nothing, nothing to the, the elevated altitude of what you're teaching them. No, I appreciate the compliment. I'm going to take that as a compliment, my brother, but that's because I studied from people just like you. I've been studying you for nine or 10 years, along with a lot of other great trainers out there. So, yeah, well, there's a lot of great trainers out there. There's a lot of frauds too. I agree. I, I mean, agree. There, there are a Jim, lot of people that they, you know, they, they got their Facebook credentials, you know, <laughs> I, I, Jim, I, think, I think we can agree. If anybody's faced a unique road in this industry, I think it might be me. <laughs> Well, listen, big guy, I'm about to sign this off. Um, Anthony Alagona, 732-456-0753, anthonyalagona.com. This guy has got all of all the phone scripts. So we, we gave you one hour today, but I'm telling you right now, there's a lot more. Um, there is a Anthony, lot more. Anthony, thank you for my, your friendship. Thank you for caring. Thank you, Jim. Thank I love you for what you do. Bye-bye.